Hey, hey. Uh, so my name is Juan Banda. I'm a research scientist at Name Shots Lab over at Stanford. And my project app to develop here it's, will be version 2 of the drug safety portal. So first of all, I'd like to give my acknowledgments to travel support by the National Bioscience Database Center and the Database Center for Applied Science for Travel. Also, all the drug safety input that's been that I received for this project, uh, the Shaw Lab and Rally Harpes, and semantic web input of things that we incorporated in this V1 of this project, but to Michelle de Montier and Tobias Kuhn. So what is the drug safety portal? So basically, this is a, a web page that says it's a portal used to, uh, easy to use that allows researchers and reg regular users, meaning anybody else, the general public, just to say, to verify if two drugs have any reported and or predicted possible adverse events. So this is basically a bridge between the scientific world and the average internet user. This central repository as of now has over seven published and publicly available data sets. So they've been through peer review and everything and they were added to this on top of the typical uh, query submit line and other more traditional drug safety things. So the origins of this, well, I my previous life was in astroinformatics. So I moved to biomedical informatics and they told me, oh well, here's your first project, this is something simple. You should uh, figure out a way to prioritize around 2,000 drug, drug interactions. They told me it was easy, sounded very easy, and I was so, so wrong. Uh, they told me that this will take me like five months. It ended up taking me a year and a half. And why? Well, all the resources, there's multiple resources with drug drug interaction information, but they don't talk to each other. So there's, uh, I don't know, over 35 data sets publicly available. They've all been reviewed, published, but they're CSV files. There's some kinds of, all kinds of different weird formats. And there's people that had everything concatenated in strings. I don't know why. So that was the first hurdle here. Secondly, there's multiple vocabularies for drugs, at least in the US. We have NDC codes uh, that have some name. We have NDFRT codes that have a string and a code. We have Rx norm that has multiple levels, and so on and so forth. And on top of that, there's multiple names for a drug, clinical name, commercial name, variants blah, 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 so this starts to get very hairy. And on top of this, okay, once you figure out the drugs, you have multiple names for the adverse events that can be either SNOMED code, MESH code, or you name it. So you can start seeing how this is a problem. So the first building block behind the, the, the project was, okay, well, first of all, I spent all these months gathering all these data sets, and putting them together, normalizing them, and making them all be sort of in the same space so we can say, you know, which drug appears, which drug drug interaction appears in how many data sets. So we took data from some of the most popular ones, like two sides, some stuff mined from fairs, some stuff from Medline, we web crawl drug bank, web crawl drugs.com, not, not drug bank, sorry, we use the RDF version of that one, nice. And we dr webcrawldrugs.com and so on. So we aggregated all these data sources together. So nicely we were able to present, uh, uh, publish this in Semantic Web Conference. We added provenance information so that now at least for all these eight data sources, you know where they come from, you know what drug drug interaction was reported, where it was reported at, and you can get it in a nice RDF uh, linked data format. The second step was, okay, now that we have all of this, how do we use this data to do anything? So in this paper, basically was a culmination of my project of prioritizing uh, drugs, uh, drug drug interactions predicted in the EHR. So we basically develop a scoring method that will say, oh, okay, well, depending on the type of database or data set, that is, you know, so it's literature, spontaneous reporting, or prediction algorithms, uh, give it a, a certain vote if it appears in a data set from this category, yes or no. So this way we're at least able to say, well, for this drug drug interaction that was predicted, we can say that this is most likely to be true 
uh, based on the fact that it's been found in other sources, other people have predicted it as well, or even people have been reporting it. So anyways, so all this is the, are the building blocks for the drug safety portal. So why did I build this app? Well, I just didn't want it to be another academic resource that only a handful of people use. It would be nice, it's all linked and everything, it's published, it's out there in, in all these repositories. Well, but how do other people use it? Not very clear for a normal person. Also, a lot of people are blindly looking at what drugs they're taking can do to them. Everybody just Googles. So you just Google your drug, and whatever you find on the top 10 pages, maybe 20 if you're an advanced user, uh, and that's what you believe. Well, if you Google any drug, you'll be amused about what comes out there, how to take them for getting high, how to take them to net, you know, to cover up off-label use, all this other stuff that is probably not very useful or it shouldn't be out there. So there's the need to have a resource that's a little bit curated and providing this for people. And also, you know, other researchers spend hours curating resources for analysis. Well, why don't we allow all of this stuff to be available centrally? And the resources are available. There are websites where you can check for interactions. Uh, the example is drugs.com, but it's complicated. If you don't have the right drug name, if you type it wrong just by one letter, you won't get any results. So the focus was, okay, I didn't want to have you know, an app like the one on the bottom where you had all kinds of settings, all kinds of things that you could modify. I was going more for a clean design. By the way, the first name was I do drugs club. That was a very bad idea because he actually got press. And this was a four in the morning hackathon decision. So be careful with those decisions because they'll come back. So anyways, uh, here's the live demo. Oh wow. Well, I guess Bootstrap doesn't scale that well here. Anyways, uh, so you, you only click on one button, and you type in a sort of natural language query of what you want, of the drugs that you want. You submit it, and it will go and do uh, processing on the string. It will go and fetch with RxNorm, drug names, normalize them, find the adverse event names, mesh, all kinds of stuff. And it gives you, okay, well, the, the interactions are found in research data sets for this, for one of the drugs. And this is the interactions found in the literature. And this looks bad here. Okay. For Adderall, you don't have much. And for both of them, you don't find much. So the whole idea was to give a better, a cleaner way of people to search for these kinds of things. So going back to my PowerPoint. So this was released September 20th at TechCrunch Disrupt at the Hackathon in the Bay Area. The project was considered to be one of the top 50 hacks of the Hackathon and got some nice press. So the problem is, okay, so the features we had, it supported two drug interactions, limited. We had a very limited set of 350 drugs and uh, a couple dozen side, uh, adverse events. And some one drug interactions worked, not all. Uh, again, limited set of drugs. Uh, I had translation, NLP translation of drug user queries using BioPortal, drug normalizations via RxNode API, mesh normalizations via mesh, uh, literature verification using Medline API and some queries that have it's been shown to do pretty good for drug adverse, uh, adverse drug events, literature extracting via PubMed. So it was a matchup of all these APIs in, a one, in one nicely convenient way. However, the DDI sources was still, it's still a MySQL database backend. So again, it was developed using Bootstrap, JavaScript, PHP, MySQL. The code's been fully available for months. So what is missing? And this is uh, the part of what I'm proposing to work on here. There is no proper linkage to data resources. You can only link, link through mesh to buyer to RDF in the actual application. Uh, however, the underlying data set is available in linked data format and has provenance information. But again, hackathon 24 hours, one person, I just stripped everything and just used it in a relational database. Quick, 
fast, dirty. But now I want to actually clean it up and use the actual link data, underlying link data for it. Uh, the ability to download interaction reports. Okay, you can find stuff, but you can't download it. So for a researcher, it's not very useful unless you're going to copy paste stuff. One cool feature that I wanted to add that will add more users and people be able to use this more often is the ability to tweet to this portal and get a re response back with the link of, okay, your drugs, drug A and drug B, check this page to say that, uh, to s check what interaction is there. And also the ability to expand the resource. Okay, now it has eight data sets manually created. I want to be able to have the option of people uploading their own stuff to it. So your objectives are proper linkage, further standardization of the resource, enable people to upload and automatically standardize their resources, provide facilities for download, the tweeting, and keep track of queries. Uh, I'll go over detail from each one of those. So proper linkage, backend data set is derived from Liddy, so data set is publicly available. I want to make this more central to the actual web facing app and li allow linkage through uh, Mesh RDF, Viadro RDF, and other, any other resources that we can find. Uh, future standardizations, we have around six different types of mapping between the data sources in order to get all the names right and all the event names right. Uh, so far, we've done standardization of uh, FAIRS data, adverse uh, spontaneous reporting systems data through uh, to, uh, common vocabulary, uh, the OMOP common vocabulary. So I want to take some of this work and be able to standardize the whole resource on this vocabulary so you can, so it's a lot easier to add new, new resources to it. I also want to be able to, you know, allow people uh, to upload their published data sets, you know, and automatically standardize them. So that should be uh, probably the biggest part of the work. And verify that it's upload, at least if you're going to upload a data set, at least there's a PubMed ID for it, so it's published somewhere. So it's curated, so you don't get some random people uploading anything they want. Uh, provide facilities to download data, so have, allow everybody to, you know, save the results of the query, and actually extract the whole DDA, DDI information for whatever analysis they want to do. Uh, people to tweet, again, make it easier for people. So in general, I mean, this is what I propose to do. Half of it is built. If you notice, the six points are uh, reasonable tasks to get done in a week. So if anybody's interested in helping out, you can just reach out to me. Thank you.